You're listening to That's a Parent with Tanya and Sean. Hi, and welcome back to That's a Parent. And this episode, we are going to be talking about what, dear? Baby's first year. Baby's first year. Baby's first year. How exciting. (laughs) There's so much to talk about from... So much puke. Adjusting to a newborn at home. Adjusting your relationship to adding one more, so whether it's poop. your first or second or third or more child. So um, much crying. Adjusting to taking care of yourself and taking care of your relationship. I'm an optimist. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It probably doesn't sound like it right now. Yeah, it doesn't really sound like it with all this like poop talk. So, yeah. Um, I'm we, also a realist, though. I like to keep it real. So am I. We are going to look back and kind of view our first year of babyhood from now parents of a, a almost 11 and 7 year old and kind of see like what would we have done differently and maybe what would we have done just the same if we could go back and tell our past selves any advice what would we say? So that's kind of what this episode is going to be about, and let's get right into it. Okay. Do you, yeah, fine. Do you yeah. want to do you want to go into um, the breastfeeding topic at all, or is that something? Sure, I, okay. I think I can a little bit. Um, I with my first child, I chose to formula feed, and it was a choice that I made because I was younger. I think I wasn't educated very well on the topic, and I was kind of misinformed through articles that I would pass the likelihood of allergies onto my child. And that was something I was very, if I breastfed and I've had struggled with asthma and allergies and eczema and all kinds of skin issues since I was a teen, preteen, probably 10, 12. Um, and I have so many allergies and I just didn't want that for my child. So I made the choice to formula feed based on a few articles I had read saying that, you know, if you breastfed, you'd give your child the chance to be more allergic to things. And I couldn't have been more wrong. So um, my son that I formula fed now is the one that has all of the ailments I had. Mm -hmm. He has allergies. He has asthma. He had major skin issues as a child. So that's right. He had eczema too. Yes, he had eczema. He kind of grew out of that though. Yeah, so did I. I had it when I was younger too when I grew out of it. That's weird. So yeah, it's just one of those things. Um (laughs) but usually all of those things kind of go hand in hand. You you often have asthma, allergies, eczema together. And I was wrong. I formula fed and he still had all those things. So um, I would just recommend make sure that you're educating yourself, not just through a few Google articles. Um, Really, really look into all of the pros and cons. And also, you know, if you feel like you want to try and breastfeed, go ahead and try And if it doesn't work, don't beat yourself up over it. If you can't do it or if it doesn't work out for you and you have to formula feed, your child will be just fine. Yeah. I mean, I was formula fed and I'm super healthy and I have very few allergies to speak of. So, yeah, it's just goes to show like you never know. Your genes are your genes. (laughs) Yep. So, if you are going to get allergies and asthma or um, you're going to get whatever. It's, you're going to get it anyway. So the, you know, the shaming on not breastfeeding is really hard. And I was in the hospital, nurses were coming up to me saying, are you sure you don't want to try? Are you sure you don't want to try? Can we get some lactation specialists to come? Aren't they and supposed to follow your birth plan? Though? They <laughs> do, but they're very pushy. They are very especially pushy. Especially for breastfeeding. So um, if that's something you've made the choice prior to going into the hospital that you don't want to do it, just stick to your guns. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion and you need to do what you're most comfortable doing. 
I really highly recommend that because it if is you're, way, it's way easier, right, to, to formula feed. Uh, it is, it's and super it is convenient. It, there's actually pros and cons to that. There that is could pro- be a oh, whole topic. There, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's pros could and be cons. a whole topic. Um, definitely, formula feeding was nice with my son because I was younger. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I was able to get a lot more help feeding. So Sean and I were able to take turns feeding overnight. And yeah. he was also very helpful of, you know, like I would go to, I would feed I um, a bottle and then I would go to sleep and then he would take like the next four hours because he was on four hours right off the bat. I know most kids are, babies are like two hour feedings right away. Our son was like right away on four he hours somehow. Great. Um, so he Super was amazing. Easy. So then Sean would take the second four hours. I could sleep for a full eight hours before I'd have to wake up and do the next bottle. So... It was nice as far as sleeping. I got a lot more sleep with him, which meant I could function better during the day. Um, But you also do give your child a lot of nutrients through your breast milk to help their immunities. And my son was very sick his first couple years of life. He was... He was also in daycare, so that could have been another that attributing was probably factor. Probably the contributor. Probably that, the main so. contributor, but he was sick a lot, so we were to a lot of doctor visits. And then my daughter, I breastfed her because the second time around, I realized, hey, guess what? My theory didn't work with my son, so I was going to try to breastfeed with her. And it's hard, I can tell you. And I'm sure that if you have a child already and you're listening, you know it's hard, it's not easy. The first week or two, you want to give up so bad. So it's really tough. If you can make it to week three or four, you're golden. Like you have to push through those first couple weeks because it's rough. Um, So, But if you can make it through, (laughs) then there's a whole bunch of like perks that... Oh yeah, so many benefits. come out of that because I mean you're saving big time money on formula. Saving money. Big time money. I'm talking... Big time money. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, big. We know Sean's all about the money. So yes, you're saving money. You're also helping your immunities of your child. Um, Statistically, breastfed children get sick less. So you're helping that, which my daughter wasn't very sick as a child. She was very rarely to the doctor, but she also wasn't in daycare. So again, I have a lot of different other environmental factors that I don't know I can't fully contribute to breastfeeding or not, but that is one thing. So they're definitely not as sick. And sometimes it's more convenient to breastfeed. Like you don't have to bring a bottle and formula with you wherever you go. You can just like whip out your boob and, you know, feed. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you know, like wherever thing. you are, if you're in bed, it's nice at night. You don't have to get up and mix a bottle. You like literally roll over and you have your bottle. It's already there. So that is nice. Um, Except it's not a bottle. It's a boob. Yeah. We, it was an expression. Just, right. But I just wanted, I expression. didn't want to confuse anyone. I didn't want anyone to think that you have bottles hanging off of you. All yes. Long. No, I definitely do not. Doll as much that as... That would look weird. Yeah, whatever. I wouldn't like that. <sighs> anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I don't poor, know if anyone has noticed, listeners. I haven't had a lot to say about this topic because, and this may surprise you, I don't have boobs, so... Yeah, he is not very contributing to this topic, yeah. but... But he... you did great, though, telling me. Oh, thank about you. It. Yeah. Thanks. Um. So, yeah, so that's definitely a topic, Um. definitely... You can do your own research and decide whether you want to formula feed or breastfeed. Yeah, it's, and a, it's a choice that's different for everyone. Yeah, so. everybody has their own thoughts on it. Oh, this puppy. Oh, our puppy is like, we, if you hear clicking around, it's our puppy. Puppies walking. do not belong in a recording studio, <laughs> number one. Okay, number two, we just really like this puppy and we let her go almost anywhere because she's so good. But right now she's a little restless and she's moving around. So if you hear some jingling or clicking in the background, that's just our puppy. Angel. She's a very nice puppy. So the other puppy's up in his crate. Because so. <laughs> he's a new puppy and he doesn't uh, he doesn't know the ropes yet. No, he would so. be much more clingy clangy there, than her. There would be problems. Uh, anyway, so, so that's one thing. Um, second, you're bringing home this new little life to your home. And your whole routine changes. So adjusting to a new routine is a big adjustment. And routines are important. 
too. Yes. So definitely it's nice to keep a routine for your baby. Um, but even for yourself, like you need to take some mom time and say, you know, hey, I need to go take a bath or I need to, you know, even if you just get dressed in regular clothes, like as much as you just want to be in pajamas all day or yoga pants, like sometimes it's nice to just like make yourself feel a little bit better and take care of yourself. Definitely mom care is something that's not very discussed in baby books or parenting books. And definitely that should be number one, because if mom isn't cared for, then baby can't be perfectly cared for either. So you need to definitely make sure that you're taking yourself as a priority or making yourself a priority. Um, so that's one thing. Um, definitely the, the scheduling. Usually baby is going to want to eat every time that your food is ready. <laughs> so just be prepared for that. That's how it works out. It's just going to happen. Um, you know, the minute your piping hot food comes out, you basically learn to eat cold food. And to this day, I still don't care if my food is cold. I am usually the last one to the is table. That why it? Why you're like that? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Someone's like, you get uh, used to it. Been from on the day table one. for like 10, 15 minutes. Where are you? Yeah, it doesn't. What even are you matter. doing? I'll eat it ice cold. It's getting it's cold. Fine. She doesn't care. It's fine. You get used to it. I mean, it's not fun in the beginning, but you get over it. Um, so the other thing that's kind of an adjustment, especially from going from no kids to having a kid, is. All of a sudden you have this child and you can't just like leave the house and go do whatever. Like you can't just be like, hey, we want to go see a movie. You yeah. Know? Like you don't you have that freedom. You, you don't have, have that freedom anymore. Like yeah, you can't just pick up away. and go. Like you can't even just get out of your car anymore and like like go to – like you feel nervous like go to, going to an ATM and getting out of your yeah. car and leaving your kid in the car. Oh, like, I still do that. Like I literally like turn off my car and I lock it. And then I like go up to the ATM. If it's a walk up ATM, right? Let's then like you're still lock in, it in sight of. Your and then kids. I go up and like quick get my money, and I quick like look around but, my yeah, shoulder. There's like it's an creepy. element of danger there now that like it's in the back of your mind. Like, well, I'm here and my kid's there. Like, we're not together. Yeah, what if, what if really something weird. happens? You know, like yeah, it it's different. It's very yes. different. And it takes a little getting used to. You can't just pop into the store real quick for something no, like everything's now. Everything's a production. You're popping out the car seat. You're popping it into a stroller. Like it's a whole like <laughs> It's event. a production. It's a whole production now. It's a production. So um, we used to go shopping when we first had our, our baby. And he had tons of hair when he was born. And yes, I did have a lot of heartburn. I don't know if that's true, but it was in my case. I did too. So I had hair, lots of hair when oh, the kid was born. Oh, I thought born. you had heartburn when I was pregnant. No, I didn't have heartburn. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. So anyway, we would go in the store, right? And here's our kid with long dark hair. He was in like a blue puppy outfit or something, and people would come up to him. Oh, she's so cute. Oh my gosh, look at her. <laughs> I remember that. You're like, it's a boy. It's a boy. But look at all of her hair. Again, yes, it's, it's a, a boy. boy. <laughs> it's a boy. He's wearing a blue and, puppy uh, outfit. Yeah, see the blue? <laughs> it's a boy. He's got a blue hat on. Yeah, so be prepared for that. So you'll get that. You'll get like random people stopping you in the grocery store. So every trip you think is going to take like 15, 20 minutes takes like two hours. Because everybody's stopping you to comment on your baby. We had like random grandmas stopping us in the store and talking to us. And we're like, oh, thanks, you know. But it's still, it's like just one more thing that kind of slows you down. It's nice sometimes. I mean, they're just being nice. What about when you were pregnant? Did you, or are you one that's bothered when people rub your belly like strangers? Strangers, I'd rather them not touch me. Yeah, <laughs> if it's like my friends, that's fine. It's like the craziest thing. But just strangers, people just think it's cool to like come up and touch you. It's like an open invitation to like rub just my belly. You have a belly. It's not a magic lamp. No genie's gonna pop out. Okay, it's a baby. Just <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> like if, people, just don't get in the habit of doing that. Because like one day you're gonna make the mistake. Of rubbing someone's belly that's not pregnant. Oh, that'd be bad. <laughs> and then, that would be it bad. It could not be any worse than that. So. That's the worst. And Don't do like, that. Uh, Come on. Back that mm, yeah. off. That's actually... So. It's a, people get um, 
arrested for or well, not arrested, but like charged with stuff like that because it's battery. It's unwanted touching. It's an actual crime. You can't just walk oh, up and it's touch a crime? this. Yeah, it's a crime. Battery oh, so is I a crime. So I could have like sued like a hundred people. Probably you could have. It's it's unwanted touching. Oh, okay. It's you know. It, so I could sue you sometimes. You, you gotta ask people. <laughs> you what? <laughs> Uh, Took you a while excuse to catch me. On to that. We're married. Number one, <laughs> that ring on oh. your finger that took me years to pay for. Oh yeah. Uh, that says that I. It can, doesn't change I the can, definition of battery, according I can to you. Touch you within reason. It still does not change that. I could make tons of money by suing you. <laughs> I listen. I know for a fact that you could not make tons of money from suing me. Oh, I know. That's see, true. That see, is you true. You do know. You do I do know. know there's actually. not. There's not really that much to be had. So, you go and have your fun. <laughs> oh man, we wow. really went off topic there. So off topic, but entertaining so, nonetheless. Yeah, it was fun. So back to things changing your routine. Definitely bringing along a baby is going to change a lot of routines for you. Um, so that's definitely something that you'll just need to adjust for. So I would say plan extra time in your schedule by like an hour more than what you need for everything you do. So like if you just need to go to the grocery store, please a lot like three hours because yeah. it will probably take that long. And, and like I said, routines are important, but learn now in the early stages to be flexible. Yes. Because very there, flexible. There are variables that happen in your daily life that you're you're going to need to handle. Yes. And you're going to have to be okay with it. <laughs> and it needs to you need to be able to be very go with the flow when you have kids. And I coming from my background prior to having kids, I was actually went through a period where I was on anxiety medication and I was very high strung and very anxiety ridden about everything. I was very schedule oriented. Everything had to stick to the schedule, I had to start when it was supposed to start, it had to end when I wanted it to end. And I was very nervous going into having kids because I had no idea how that was going to change me and how I was going to be able to handle that because I wasn't sure if I could. And weirdly, I don't know that this is the case for everybody and somehow it worked out in my favor. I went from being the most high strung anxiety ridden person to probably one of the most laid back people. Like I, my personality made almost a 360 and after having kids, I was so go with the flow, very calm, whatever happens, happens. If we don't get to this part or this place today, it's no big deal. We'll go another day. It was yeah. totally well, different. They, they say that having kids like chemically just changes you so much. It must have. In that, my case, it you know, must you're have. You're going to see differences like that. Yeah. It, they do say that it resets your whole body. So, so much resets. Um, so that actually kind of leads me to the next topic. I think body is probably a good topic to talk about because... It took you nine months to get to where you were with pregnancy and gaining all that weight that after you have a baby, don't beat yourself up about losing weight and getting right back into your pre-pregnancy body because you need to give yourself time, like at least a year to, you know, get in a new routine and a new habit and Breastfeeding does help, actually, you to lose weight after having a baby. Mm. Um, so formula feeding, like with my son, that was not helping me to lose weight. And I gained 60 pounds with him. So you, it was a you, lot. You retained a lot of water with yes. your first pregnancy. Like, I had so much water weight. And yeah. like at the very end, I could barely walk. My ankles were cankles. You were so swollen. And I had to ride the cart at the store like the old person buggy. I almost forgot about that. And yeah, it was bad. I could not walk. And yeah, that was a fun time that I had to ride that. Like imagine but... people, a motorized cart pregnancy. Like oh, that's, yes. that's where she was at. Yeah, that's so. where I was. It was so bad. And afterwards, it took me a while to get back and um, I did a weight loss program. I'm not going to say names. Don't mention um, names. They haven't paid us yet. <laughs> but it really helped me. And um, But I would say it was almost a year after 
I had my son that I even started this program. So be nice to yourself, you know, give yourself some leeway and just, you know, know that it's going to take a while and your focus right after you have the baby is the baby. So, you know, once you get into a routine and into habits, then you can develop new habits for yourself and you'll get there. It just, yeah, it'll take a you're while. You're going to find get that you're not going to have time to work out once you have that kid. <laughs> like, not oh, for a definitely while. definitely not. Not for, well, not until like, you know, maybe they get closer to one year old and they, they stop needing so much all the time. And you get into a kind of a routine where you start to figure out like, okay, I have a window of time here. I can do what I want. Yes. Which is also a struggle because when they always say when baby is sleeping, then you should be sleeping. Well, when baby is sleeping, you're thinking, oh, I have to do the dishes. I have to change the laundry. I have to fold the baby's laundry. I have to wash bottles. Um, I have to maybe work out it's or usually, I, have I have to, to meal myself. plan. I <laughs> no. have to get something to eat. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's so many things that you could be doing and literally you taking a nap is usually the last thing on your mind as much as like going back and telling myself now, I wish I would have taken more naps when I still could. When my baby was a baby that couldn't get up and move and walk and talk and be at my ear, I could have taken a lot of naps that I missed out on. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a struggle. So I would say... What's a nap? Oh, I miss naps. Yeah. I would say definitely, you know, kind of balance that. You know, sometimes take a nap, sometimes throw in a load of laundry, or if you can do a quick chore while baby's sleeping, say baby takes a two hour nap, you throw in a load of laundry, wash one or two bottles and then take a nap. Like that's the best thing you could probably do. And a tired mom is not a good mom. So you taking a nap and getting your sleep is definitely one of the best things you can do. Okay. So. Yeah. So first year of a baby's life, where yeah. where are we at now? Where the baby's getting a little older. Okay. Uh, what, so what's the crawling, next? like moving. Okay. Like six months. Are we talking seven baby months? baby proofing houses and sure. stuff like that? Because yeah, I'll tell you, fun. I'll tell you what, guys, baby gates are not super cheap. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. But talk to your friends because if your friends have already had kids, they've got those things stashed in their attic or something just ask them they will be happy to let you borrow a baby gate for a few months you know what yes. I mean? instead there's of having so to go, much go stuff. out and buy four baby because sometimes yes. people's houses need like four baby gates to keep their kids from taking a tumble somewhere there's so. literally so many things in a baby's first year of life that are way overpriced Because you slap the word baby on it and all of a sudden it's got double the price tag. Mm -hmm. And it's so much money. And if I could go back and tell my past self anything, it would be don't spend so much money on baby stuff, especially things that have limited time usages. Yes. And one of them being baby gates and or even clothes. Like, you know, you do wash once a week or twice a week or whatever it is. And you don't need to have so many baby clothes for each month. Oh my god! They're, I had they're growing so out of it many. so fast, you guys, so fast. I had stuff with tags still on it that my kids never wore. I had so many things that just you know maybe they wore it one time, and it just is so much money that you spend. And even now, like I even went to the store recently to get a baby gift for somebody and looked at prices. I cannot believe the prices on baby clothes. I mean, if you have a friend that's willing to give you clothes that they had from their baby, use them. Yeah. You know, I was very proud and wanted to get all new stuff. It was my first baby. I wanted the best of the best. All this new clothes, new stuff. And I wish that I would have gotten a lot of secondhand stuff because it was a lot of waste of money. Trust me, it's not gross. It's if it's it's used, it's it's you wash it, it's washed, it's clean. Like even if there's like 
some some minimal stains on it. It's a clean stain. <laughs> you know what and I guess mean? Like, what? Probably just wear it. your baby's gonna probably stain it. Your baby's gonna so. stain the hell out of it. <laughs> like way more than yeah. you even got it. So there's so much so that your friend's not gonna want that back, trust me. <laughs> so. Well, that's true. Yeah. So we were in the boat where we did not have any ki- any friends that had kids prior to us. We yeah, were the we, first ones we of bought, well, we had our help. friends and family. We had some help with we had you know very supportive uh, grandparents that oh uh, grandparents got a lot that. of clothing. For, we should talk about uh, how grandparents kids. spoil their kids. Uh, that could be grand- a whole podcast. That's a whole podcast. So we shouldn't even get into yeah, that. Yeah, that's now, a whole podcast about grandparents. Our kids got some great grandparents that uh, take really good care of them. So yes, and they've they've helped us out quite a quite a bit with clothing and and so yes. many other things. But we but, didn't have the the privilege really of having secondhand stuff from friends no, because no. none of my friends had kids yet we were the first so right. now i get to return the favor though and i get to give stuff to them so which is great yeah, yeah. i for mean them. for them <laughs> not for us really but yeah. i don't know we're at the point now where we're like we don't even want it back just take nope, it just, just get it. out of our house because we, we don't need, need it. it it's yeah. too much um so they're getting benefited from it but Definitely don't go crazy buying all this expensive crap. Yeah, if you don't like, have to, don't. Like ask don't. family, ask your cousins, ask your friends. What what do you have that I can borrow for a few months or whatever? Yes. And when you go to pick out things for your registry or things that you really want, try to pick out like the one or two more expensive items that you know are the most important, especially for a registry because – Let's face it, you maybe will get like two of the more expensive items on your registry because like all of your friends at work went together to get you one big thing or something. So you're not going to get like five to ten huge expensive things. Pick out like the one or two that you really want. Like maybe you want to spend the money on a nice video monitor. That was something that I would go back and spend money on again. A nice swing would be something I would spend money on because that's going to be your lifesaver. We used the heck out of our swing. Oh, oh. so many when times. You, if you have a colicky baby, sometimes you, you lay them in that swing and it's like, you know, like a switch got flipped and they just immediately quiet and they fall asleep and you're just like, oh my gosh, thank God for oh, this the swing. swing. The, sometimes it's such a our kids sometimes. slept in the swing overnight. Like we put the swing by our bed. Yeah, if they're having a real it, rough night. And if they were really gassy or really had issues, we put them in the swing. So definitely that's something I would probably spring for and get something that's nicer or a better high quality swing. Um, other than that, like even these travel systems, I don't think that you need like – all of these pieces to your travel system and matching stroller and matching all this stuff. Like we had a, a frame stroller that just opened up and you stuck the car seat in it and that's it. It had a basket in the bottom to put your diaper bag. Yeah. Like that thing was great. It was convenient. It was awesome. So you really don't need all of this fancy stuff. So take that in, into consideration when making a registry or um, planning for supplies. Um, so definitely don't go crazy with toys because you don't have the room And they're going to grow out of them. And they're going to outgrow it. Super and quick. And our kids loved, I know I sound like my parents when I say this, but like our kids loved playing with Tupperware and wooden spoons. Like we yeah. would go to grandparents' houses and they they're would just get more give them that. Out of the most or like, simple things. Like a pile of twenty different color washcloths or something. They were like playing with those. There's so hey many kids, here's a cardboard box. Knock yeah. yourself out. Hours. And Hours guess of what? entertainment. It was free. Free. Totally free. Well, you know. Except for all the, the item that crap you bought from Amazon. Was, right. <laughs> that was in that box. <laughs> now you're name dropping again. Oh here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Amazon, you owe us nine ninety five. <laughs> Oh, anyways. Double that because I, I just It was I only a matter of time. Also, so double that. <laughs> so, yes, definitely, um, you know, just be mindful of what you're buying and just realize that you could use that money towards diapers and or wipes and or formula 
probably more than the crap that you're buying. <laughs> like, you really don't need that much. Child safety stuff is relatively cheap for, like, cabinets. Oh, yeah, stuff. it's pretty cheap. Just, That's not an expense. Listen, and really. this is me coming from a construction background. Pre-drill your cabinets before installing your baby-proofing uh, plastic devices because you do not want to split <laughs> the wood <laughs> Of your cabinets. Do you know this from experience? No. Well, I know this from just knowledge of construction. Oh, okay. Uh, I've never split a cabinet because I know better. But oh. I'm trying to pass oh, okay. this knowledge on to other friends. Uh, to poor unsuspecting parents exactly. trying to safety proof Because I don't want them to, to break their stuff, you know? So, anyway. Um, then your baby is almost to the walking stage. So what do we have to do to prepare for a walking baby? I feel like we just covered this. You got a you got a baby proof, right? That's crawling. I mean, oh, you got a crawling? baby proof when you're crawling, man. Okay. What what's different with walking? Not necessarily baby proofing, but I just mean in general. Like oh. all of a sudden you you can't sit in one spot anymore at gone. parties. Like let's talk about parties for a minute, okay? Going to a party and your baby is one and you just went and collected your plate of food and all of a sudden your baby's like halfway across the yard in like somebody else's party or something. Like, it's crazy. It's yeah. hard. I mean, you can't sit still for five seconds. It's very it's, exhausting. It's like a 24-7 job being a parent of like a one-year-old because they are everywhere. Yeah. One as soon is as you hard. turn your head, they are gone. They, I mean, unless you have like that child that's like really clingy, which some people have, which is probably kind of nice because you don't have to worry as much. Yeah, we didn't get lucky enough but to have that child. That's rare. Yeah, we had only flight risk childs, both <laughs> children. <of them>. So, <laughs> childs. so like, <laughs> listen, childs, <laughs> they they were like always. Just they are flight risk gone. You know, literally. And we're like, you could, where are they? Well, they could be anywhere. So yep, let's, they, let's get like to the in a blink of, this. of an eye. So you can't even get in a deep conversation with someone while your child's walking yeah, because you have to be on alert. Yeah, like you don't know. So you're always on high alert and like on edge because you can't relax. You can't yeah. go to a party. You can't go places and relax. And I think that's the stage where people feel more comfortable staying in. Like, it'd be more comfortable to stay home and order a pizza and just kind of relax and, Yeah, but, it, I mean, know. it's important to get out and socialize and, and go and see friends, too. But it's like... It is, but you can only last for so long. Yeah, just, just limit like, it. Don't, don't be there for three or four hours because, number one, like, the kid's not going to last that long. You can't. And, yeah. and you're not going to last that long because you're going to be exhausted from what, worrying about what they're getting into the whole time. So yeah. just I, you know, I know, remember know your limits being there. pretty stressed at that point when we would go places and I would be like very thankful when the time came that we were getting ready to go. I knew my limit. I got to a point where I'm like, okay, we got to go. Like, the child can't handle anymore. I can't handle anymore. Let's go. Two things that I want to leave you with safety-wise for a, a, a young child that's starting to be mobile, okay? Um, any any sharp corners in your house, the edge of, like, the TV stand or something, you're going to want to get those really soft rubber bumper things and just stick those suckers to those corners because that those are like that ma- still helps me those are like magnets yeah it helps for tanya too she took a fall today just trying to step over something so uh, it was pretty I didn't, bad i wasn't sure actually. you were gonna make it down to record this actually i thought i She's, had like a fracture in my she, leg she like our children are super coordinated so yeah very um yeah, so the corner things, get them, buy them. I don't care how much they are, just buy them. They're so worth it. If it avoids a trip to the ER for stitches, you're going to thank me. Uh, and number two is, uh, I don't know what it is, nobody even thinks of this, but our our child had this weird thing about door hinge pins. She would fall and hit her head on the hinge pin 
of the door. Like the bottom is This is one. unheard of. This is unprecedented. This doesn't happen to anyone, but it yeah. happened to our daughter and twice. And landed her in the hospital with stitches She once. had to get a, one stitch in her and forehead once. The other time, and the other time, was they it was right? well, like, it was so close it. to her eye that they just didn't want to do the yeah. stitch. They said we could have, but we're just gonna like tape it shut. And I was like, okay, fine. Um, but what are you supposed to do to baby proof these? Well, what we did was, or what I did was, I took basically like a paper towel and I gaffers, t- which is like a kind of tape. I taped it to the hinge pin to make it like a soft pad for the top of the hinge pin because they don't this, they don't make anything for that so if somebody's listening and you you patent something oh, maybe we should you're welcome that. for that million dollar idea yeah maybe we should do that we in all our free time that. with our kids we'll, we we'll definitely invent something and make money but yeah it's Not. definitely a freak thing that you would never think about definitely like, something people don't think about and i can tell no. you from experience more than once it has been an issue yeah, <laughs> so more than once which is very rare for it to even happen one time and it happened to our daughter twice, twice. same so, child two so times. maybe it's a thing maybe it is maybe i don't know so and something to look out for and with that um that was definitely happening while she was walking so yeah it wasn't while she was, she was crawling to toddle around yeah she was very clumsy on her feet so still is yeah so she broke her elbow on the playground at school so we'll get into that oh, that'll be a whole <laughs> that's another, a whole podcast now another issue um yeah. medical bills that's a whole podcast oh gosh <laughs> let's not do that one that would be depressing all right so we've kept you long <laughs> enough on this one guys uh so we're gonna wrap it up here but uh do you even know, dear, what the next podcast is going to be about? Yes, we... I do, actually. Why don't you let the, oh, the kids the kids know? <laughs> the kids? The kids. You All crazy right, kids. kids. So the next podcast is going to be about going from one child to two children. <gasps> Multiples. So, yeah. Um, we can't go to a two child to three child because we're not, we don't we have that experience. experience that. You, maybe people out there can tell us. Maybe. Yes. So yeah, we're going to talk about too. going from one child to two children and what that is going to look like in your family life. So thanks for listening. And, uh, hopefully this was helpful and we'll catch you next time. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to That's a Parent. Be sure to stay connected by visiting thatsapparentpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook at fb.me slash thatsapparent.